It was a neighbor that sexually abused me over a period of about two years. Um, started when I was 10 and ended when I was 12. And um, then we moved to a new place and I went to, a, to my first scout camp and I was physically and sexually abused at the scout camp. Um, so I, I have a rather significant history of being abused. As I look back upon the years I spent at Love in Action, it was a constant pursuit of something that I hoped would occur that never did. Because for me, I attached my homosexuality to my childhood brokenness. When I finally separated the issues and said, I'm gay, and that's okay, but yes, I have a wounded childhood, I finally saw how much work I had done in healing that childhood. But I couldn't see that before because I was still gay, and I still believe that being gay was a result of the broken part. And I feel sad that there are so many other people today who don't separate that. That they still think they're sick and broken because they're gay. I was estranged from my father for five years, from age 19 to 24. And I stopped talking to him out of my resentment towards him for putting me through conversion therapy. I thought he hated me, I thought he never loved me. I thought he just was afraid of having a gay son. And I blamed him for everything. Because it, it was my father's fears that drove him to put me into conversion therapy. All parents want to know two things. They know they're going to leave this world with their children behind. And they want to know that their children are going to be taken care of and loved for. And parents will do anything they can to make that happen. That's how most minors end up in conversion therapy. It's the fears of the parents of what will happen to their child. It's very important that the government acknowledges what's being, the harm that's being done to minors. That's really annoying. Who is calling us? Okay, just unplug that thing. Senator Brad Oilman is the only openly gay New York State Senator right now. He's awesome. Um, he's sponsored the conversion therapy ban that's been introduced to New York State. I think it's an adult's choice to seek out conversion therapy. Everyone should be able to pursue happiness for their lives as they see fit. But I wouldn't want a parent to impose it on a child, a child who may have feelings of suicide, who is already grappling with their identity, and who, as a state and as a society, we look to protect. So we want to ban that practice in New York by licensed therapists on minors, just as California has and just as New Jersey has. For the children of New Jersey to be completely protected, we need our bordering states to follow our lead. I hope that once you accomplish a ban for New York, we can work together. If you weren't in the state of California, can you talk about how you would be able to work with minors? No, it's not about working with minors. I can work with minors. It's not at all. I mean, um, we're not, we're, we don't have any law restrictions here. Well, in the state of California, um, Senate Bill 1172 was created, and um, basically it is now law in the state of California that no licensed clinician can provide reparative therapy on minors. There is a law in California, but it's, it doesn't affect us because the law says you cannot try to change sexual orientation. Well, we don't try to change sexual orientation. You know, they may do some wordsmithing and not say it's reparative therapy. The only three tools that we have is asking questions. Why? Why? Uh-huh. Why? Giving interpretation which the client can accept or not accept. And number three, education. We give them information. So when the, if there's going to be a law that says that we cannot try to change, well, we cannot try to change. How can we possibly change anybody? So it's a law that we don't have to be concerned about, really. A reparative therapist who continue to treat minors in the state of California and New Jersey are in a really perilous position. So for them to continue to do so is putting their license in jeopardy, besides being incredibly harmful to the children who are seeking service from them. I've told 
myself that if I just give it enough time, those past hurts of my life will just all go away. The fear, the anger, the sadness, they'll weaken and, and die eventually. If I could just keep them buried long enough, but they don't die. Perhaps only for a moment, but I open myself up to letting down these walls. And there underneath it all, I find my core emotions. Through an act of conscious surrender, I release my attachment to lust. For me, living happy meant that I needed to live true to myself. And the fastest way to set me off is to have somebody that thinks that I'm doing, I'm not living the, because I'm not living the way they want me to, when they tell me, well, you need to be true to yourself. Who do they think they are defining for me what being true to myself is? This is our journey. We get to choose how to respond to same-sex attraction. We get to choose what to call ourselves and how to, what to identify and how to live our lives. And I respect the right of gays to do that as well, but don't take it away from us. I experienced my authentic anger. I feel angry! I hear my anger. I feel my anger. I honor it. It felt like what I was really needing was a sense of community with other men, a sense of um, reassurance of who I was as a man, and I just wasn't getting that in terms of those, those types of relationships that I was pursuing. So. It took 17 years for me to find this organization. I feel like I'm in a better place now than I was four years ago when I went through this weekend um, to become a father and to become that role model that my children will need that I didn't get when I was growing up. I know for me, if the gay community had offered what I thought it had to offer, a sense of brotherhood and acceptance and community, that I probably would have stayed in it and gone into it full, fully. Um, but it, I didn't find that. I found that in the People Can Change, or built that in the People Can Change community, which I founded. Um, it's very loving and accepting. I feel joy. All right, then the three of you come in closer because our core emotions are never far away and you're just sort of put your hands out like this. The people who are still doing this now, I believe for the most part have a good heart, just as we did. I think they have gone over the top at this point. And they're using their good hearts to promote change and it's a false promise. It's really not therapy, it's, um, it's quackery. It's harmful and it damages youth. We go to therapy to improve ourselves, to make our lives better. But the truth of the matter is, is that being born gay or straight is innate. And there's certainly nothing wrong with it and nothing that needs to be fixed. Once parents who love their kids know what they are risking by putting them through conversion therapy, conversion therapists don't have a business they can run. That's what's gonna happen. That's how we're gonna win. Reparative therapy, conversion therapy, is a conversation that we have to have. And you're not going to change someone with, with facts and statistics by having people who were in reparative therapy have come through this at some level. These are the ones that need to come out and share their stories. Hi, my name is Ryan Kendall. Hi, my name is April Prentice. My name is Christian Shizzle. I was sent to conversion therapy from the ages of about 14 to 16. I thought, oh my gosh, I have to get help. I cannot be gay and Christian. Those two things were mutually exclusive to me. And having my church tell my family and tell everybody around me that who I was was wrong. God was disgusted with who I was and that I needed to change who I was to be acceptable. One practice I engaged in to try to change my sexuality was a deliverance, otherwise known as an exorcism, in order to remove the demon of perversion. Conversion therapy is a crock of shit. This is nothing but pseudoscience. It has no basis in reality. It has no basis in fact. It is so subtle and so insidious in some places that you don't even recognize that you've been damaged from it. It has created a lot of dissonance for me, between me and my family members. Uh, for about 12 years, I was suicidally depressed, um, and I hated myself, I hated my life, and I wanted to die. It completely shatters someone's well-being and path to God. I'm very lucky to have gotten out of this whole process alive. And I could not deny that I could feel for a man in the way that I could not 
feel for a woman. I know that I know that I know that I was born gay. And I know that I know that I know that the relationship that I am in now, it's a beautiful thing. And these people who are being subjected to this message need to realize that there's nothing wrong with who they are. There's nothing wrong with being gay. There's nothing wrong with falling in love with someone of the opposite sex or with someone of the same sex. And I hope this helps. Yes, I actually have. One, one of my best friends is, is uh, homosexual and came out of the gay lifestyle, actually. We're, we're good friends, and he knows exactly what I'm doing, but he never really penetrates exactly what I'm doing. We have drinks together, and we talk about opera. 